and downs, rights and left. You never know where your day could go. You could think that you're gonna you're gonna play four square and then you could end up just being on the couch all day, playing the computer all day. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Learning by Living, the podcast about people who learn outside of conventional schools. On this episode, we have two guests, Jason Kaznicki and his 11-year-old daughter, Ali Sterin. This episode requires a bit of a context, so here it is. About a year before this recording, Jason contacted me for advice about Ali. At that point, she was really disengaged with school, avoiding homework like the plague, and it affected both her relationship with her family and her self-esteem. So Jason and I had a lot of conversations about whether conventional school was really a fit for Allie, and I talked them into looking at a local Sudbury school called Fairhaven. For those who aren't familiar, Sudbury schools don't have any classes, don't have curricular requirements. It's just really a place where kids can do what they'd like with their time and what they're really learning by living. So for this podcast, Gene and I sat down with both Jason and Allie about a year after enrolling at Fairhaven to see how things are going. We first talked with Allie, but we think we're going to start with Jason's excerpts from the interview because it sets the stage. So Jason talked to us about the decision process about removing Allie from a conventional school and putting her in a Sudbury school, and how and what Allie learns there, as well as how Allie seems to have improved since going. Allie talked to us about things like what the layout of her school is and talks to us about how she spends her time there, and she compares learning there to learning in a conventional school. So as you can see, we had a really wide-ranging discussion that's really at heart about a family and a child's arduous transition from conventional schools to learning by living. We really hope you enjoy this episode. So Jason, if you don't mind, I want to start at kind of the beginning of this because you contacted me. So about a year ago, she was still in a regular school. Yeah, she was. She was. And then you contacted me, if I remember right. It wasn't. It, it was probably a little less than a year ago. Um, it was. Yes, it was a little less than a year ago because it would have been in December. Right. Right. So, what was going on at that time? Okay. Well, um, it's a little bit difficult to talk about, but we uh, had a parent-teacher conference with uh, her. Uh, math teacher at her previous school, which had been a talented and gifted magnet school program that she'd tested into. And the math teacher revealed to us that she had just not been doing her math homework for weeks and weeks. And she'd been concealing it from us and not telling us that it was even assigned. And she'd say, no, we just didn't have any math homework today. And uh, we asked, well, what can we do about this? Obviously, we want her to get a good education and we we considered important and the teacher just kind of laughed and said well there's nothing you can do don't worry about it and uh you know some kids are just going to fail and we weren't ready for her just to fail we did not think that that was a good thing for a school to say about anyone and certainly not for somebody who tested into a tag program so uh we went looking around for other schools And we had always thought that maybe taking the plunge and going to a Sudbury school would be a a thing we'd want to consider. Um, We were somewhat concerned about it. And I did, I reached out to uh, Kevin about that. And we had a pretty long, uh, sometimes contentious uh, text conversation about it. Um, But uh, then eventually we decided to do a trial week, which we did. And uh, the trial week was um, her going to Fairhaven school during the day. She was expected, however, to do every single bit of the homework that she would otherwise do at her old school. And she was expected to do all of the in-school classwork that she otherwise would do at her old school. And so every night she came home with a gigantic pile of papers to get through. And she was putting in like 14, 15 hours a day of uh, Fairhaven school and then regular school work. When she got home, she would go to bed at like 11, exhausted. And uh, I found that kind of, you know, the final insult of uh, the previous school system. It seemed just a, a terrible thing to do to me. Uh, it, what the, That they would make her do, like that, they, that she would do all of it? They would insist on her making up every single bit of it when, when we had just been to a parent-teacher conference and the teacher had said, we honestly don't care about this stuff. Well, you know, make up your mind. Do you care about it or not? And uh, 
when it became obvious that it wasn't really a matter of caring or not, when it was uh, what uh, in philosophical circles is called BS, uh, <laughs> and we decided, okay, this is enough, and uh, that kind of made the decision for us. Fortunately, um, Allie very quickly made friends at Fairhaven and found that she liked the system, which yeah. I thought was a really mature decision to make for someone of her age. Depending on your comfort level with this, can we get into a little bit? You mentioned that our conversation was a little bit contentious, and it was, right? And part of what I remember from that conversation was that I think you do what is understandable of any parent to do, which is my child is having trouble. It's something with my child. And I don't think you expected me to say drop the whole homework thing because this homework thing really seems kind of toxic. It's, it's she doesn't enjoy talking about it. You don't enjoy talking about it. This is just coming between the, the you know, folks in the family. What was your kind of experience kind of with, with that part of the conversation and that experience? Well, I, I was aware of the research about homework, saying that homework does not in general contribute to learning. And uh, if anything, there's a short increase in the skills that are acquired and then it dissipates pretty quickly is my understanding. But there was a strong sense in my own mind that uh, even if it's valueless on that dimension, you still go to school to signal that you can jump through hoops and it's important to do that kind of signaling. And if you're not doing that kind of signaling, then uh, that says something that future employers will take note of and you will therefore not get a job in the future. And uh, that was sort of what I was thinking about homework, even even in fourth grade. I mean, if, if you're not doing fourth grade homework, uh, what, uh, what hope do you have to get even a basic minimum wage job? Um, I still have some apprehension about that, and I am still somewhat concerned that uh, I would like to see a bit more drive or resolve on Allie's part to undertake something hard and see it through to completion. But uh, I also look back at my own childhood, and I think that there were there were a lot of times when I didn't show that kind of initiative either. So, um, yeah, I think from what I know of kind of the unschooling and Sudbury literature, their general response, whether whether it's believable or not, is that at some point you just find something that you care about enough to do that, but it often takes time. But that's a really hard response to really take in and internalize because what you see every day is, well, this kid's not committing to stuff. This kid's not, and they're just going to say, well, let's give it more time and more time. And at some point, you know, it, it, it's a hard answer to swallow. It is. It is. I mean, that's, uh, that's something that I still kind of deal with every day. Uh, at the same time, I recognize that she does learn a lot. I mean, uh, I would say when she first started going to Fairhaven regularly, when it was, uh, when it was her regular day in, day out school, uh, I very quickly noticed that she started having a lot more sophisticated vocabulary. She was interested in talking about a lot of different topics that uh, she had learned about from older kids in the school. And uh, we ended up having a lot more interesting conversations. Uh, it seemed like she had you know, grown up at least like a year within a couple of months just because of her uh, being around older kids who simultaneously set an example for her and uh, you know, give her things to talk about that she maybe hadn't been exposed to before. And uh, I know that that's something that in our standard education system, kids are kept very carefully away from as if uh, the older kids were a danger. And uh, one often hears them talked about that way in, in conventional school settings. Well, you know, you can't have the eighth graders around the kindergartners because that will be bad. Well, that's something Fairhaven does all the time. And uh, while they segregate into age groups more or less naturally, they also break those barriers more or less naturally. Sometimes they're there, sometimes they're not. I know one of the things that um, she talked about, you know, once she went to Fairhaven, and I think you and her kind of bonded over, if I remember right, was yoga. Right? She came, didn't she at some point you said she came to you and kind of asked you about yoga and like, yeah, what is this? Yeah, and, we did. We had a, a conversation about yoga and she has uh, extended her, I mean, she's she's made probably more progress in physical education than in any other 
aspect of, of education while there because she remains very interested in, in games and movements and both cooperative things and also uh, individual things like gymnastics and tumbling and that kind of thing. So, so absolutely. Yeah. So from an outsider perspective, it seems like um, social emotional learning is something we talk about a lot in traditional schools and from just meeting her, right? I'm just like, wow, here's <laughs> that is super um, socially and emotionally mature, right? So, I mean, just from the half an hour we talked to her. Um, so that's such a compliment. I really want to know two things. I really want to know, number one, like, are there tangible ways that the switch from traditional to Sudbury school has made the relationship better, the family relationship better? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I'm, we're not, we don't have to be homework cops anymore and that's a tremendous relief. And instead we can spend time uh, together and do fun things. And so uh, we play computer games together. Uh, she's really into Roblox. I'm a bit more into Minecraft. And uh, we sit next to each other and we talk about our games and we interact with each other online. And uh, uh, it's, it's fun. I mean, we have, we have fun in the evenings instead of doing work that doesn't actually benefit her. Her other dad reads her Harry Potter, and they've been reading Harry Potter together. So she's been she reads some, and he reads some, and uh, it's it's a fun thing. It's not an assignment that you have to read these books because when you sign a book, it takes all the fun out of it. I mean, it really does. <laughs> and, uh, it really does. <laughs> so so uh, she's she's getting uh, language skills from uh, a very informal way, but certainly she's reading something that's worth reading, and she's enjoying it. And so I always notice like when there's a familial shift, right, there tends also to be like sort of a philosophical shift. Um, so can you talk a little bit more about the philosophical shift that maybe you're still going through with her going from a traditional school to a Sudbury more democratic school? Um, I have always liked the idea of the Sudbury school, but liking the idea and going through with it are two different things. I mean, it's kind of like skydiving, you know? I mean, uh, people say they want to do it and then you're actually in the airplane and you're like, oh man, <laughs> oh, I don't know no. if I want to do this. Uh, but uh, I think we're well past that now. We're coming up on a uh, full year that she's been there and uh, we have occasionally talked about what she wants to be when she grows up and what uh, preparation for that would look like for someone in her situation. But this is fifth grade year, uh, the equivalent of fifth grade year. And so she has plenty of time to figure that out. Uh, right now, she wants to be an architect. And I think that sounds fantastic. What we'll have to do in the years to come is make sure that she does not fall too far behind in terms of math and uh, uh, you know, sciences. And she's going to she's gonna have to learn physics and all of that. But uh, it does help that her other dad is an aerospace engineer for NASA. And so I think uh, he can probably teach physics better than uh, probably most people can, even, even without training. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> we, will, uh, we will continue to work with her about math concepts and allow her to explore those on her own for the most part. So, so uh, one of the things that she told me that she really didn't like about school, and of course you mentioned it, is math. Math is kind of where the problem began. Um, how would you say that's going? Because I know in private conversations you and I have had, that's always been kind of like a little still area of kind of lingering reticence is well, math. What about math? If we have, we have uh, taken it pretty easy and we have backed off from what the schools were asking her to do but we have not completely shut off math work. I mean, we've, we have, uh, especially uh, Scott has mostly gone through uh, worksheets with her uh, on her own time. And uh, it is not something where we expect her to do the work or she's punished. It's how about you give this a try? Or uh, this is related to this other thing that you wanted to know about. And this is how, that kind of math works, or this is how you do this thing that can help you get what you want. Uh, it's on an ad hoc basis, but I think she is picking up uh, concepts in math pretty well. That's awesome. And do you see any of the same sort of problems as before, kind of really avoiding that type of work, not really wanting to do it, or, or is it, has it changed? I got to be honest and say she still is not 
hugely thrilled with the right. idea of doing math, but uh, that I, yeah. I think is pretty common among kids. And uh, yeah. you know, hopefully that will change and it's going to need to change if she wants to stay in the career path she's talking about. But yeah. uh, again, it's early. It's early. I, th I think that's right. I mean, there's, in some ways, there's this kind of I, like mythology around unschooling in Sudbury that that um, kids will just become well-rounded naturally, and they'll they'll just discover math and history and science and reading, and they'll do all those things. And I mean, no kid does that. I don't. I don't. I don't think. No, I, think, I mean, not not completely on their own. They have to have a, a reason to seek it out. Right. I think when you said like this is how you get to do the thing that you want right, mm -hmm. really rings th true as someone who, my son didn't go to school until he went to college. Um, and so math was always like a point of contention. We didn't formally do math. We didn't formally do writing. Um, we didn't formally do really anything. Um, but it, you know, you saw him like, uh, after he got out of undergrad, start studying for his GREs. And it was sort of like, well, now I have to learn math because this is the thing I need to do to get into graduate school, right? So I think yeah. you can have this whole, um, philosophy in your head, like, okay, if this is the thing I need to do to get what I want, then it becomes easier and probably more motivating. Yeah, yeah, I think that's true. I think that's true. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong about this, but I don't believe that it's the same as acquiring a language. So if you want to be fluent in a language, you've kind of got to start early because a grown up or a relatively grown up brain doesn't acquire a language so easily. Uh, so uh, yeah, I wouldn't be able to learn another language with fluency now. I'd be able to speak it, but I'd never be very, you know, good at it. And then, and, and uh, my understanding is though that with math, it doesn't work that way. If you if you learn a math skill even as an adult, you can absorb it and uh, you know, be proficient with it. I think the research on language goes both ways too. Um, interestingly, so there's been a lot of like you can't learn language as an adult, um, and now there's been a lot of yes, you absolutely can. Oh. Immersion is the most important part oh, of. Oh, okay, okay. So, so yeah, like, I remember, it's easier to immerse kids than it is to immerse. An adult I mean, yeah, like kids are more naturally yeah. immersed than it is to like pick up and go somewhere. Well, you, well, you put a kid in, you put a kid in a classroom where the teacher speaks nothing but German, and you know they want to know how to do stuff. They're going to learn some German. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. If you uh, if you have an adult and they want to do something, they are not going to bother to learn the German. Got to go travel. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think it's less easy, right? So the the situational, the environment mental stuff is less easy yeah um, but that doesn't mean it's impossible at all which is a nice thing right as I get into my 40s to know that I can still like be good and gain competence in me <laughs> <laughs> so okay so you're coming up on a full year what are your thoughts at this point like going forward what do you see for Ali in the near future and in, in you know or several years out do you feel like this path continue on this path go back to more formal structure we think? told her that as long as she is okay with it, we are okay with her staying through eighth grade. And during the eighth grade year, we will talk about what we want to do from that point forward and make it happen. Uh, we don't want her worrying about it every day or every month. She is happy where she is. We are happy with her where she is. So we're setting the question aside until eighth grade. And when eighth grade comes around, then we'll talk about whether we want to uh, move to a different school or stay with Fairhaven. And it will be something that we'll, we'll decide together at that point. And if she has ideas in the meantime, between then and now, she can talk about them. And if she says, well, you know, I really want to go to a performing arts school or I want to go to a school that's going to give me more of a background in math and science, we will see what we can do to make that happen. Uh, right now, there's not a whole lot that she especially needs to be doing for, for uh, those different alternatives. So we're going to take it a little bit easy and uh, let her develop and find her way naturally for a few years, and uh, then we'll move on. Sounds great. So I guess the last question I just have is if there's anything else that you would want viewers, listeners to know about this whole experience that they can take as a, as a lesson or something else that you feel is important. I don't know that I have a lot of insight compared to uh, parents who have been there longer, but uh, 
uh, be prepared for an adjustment and also be prepared for it to be more fun than you realized because uh even parents, I think, if we're being honest, will not always see uh, or find fun in public schooling. It's uh, it's a lot of work for parents now, which it's my sense it didn't used to be. But the amount of homework that they give and the amount of time that they spend preparing for standardized tests and the amount of uh, jumping through bureaucratic hoops, all of that seems to have increased a lot since I was a kid. And uh, I don't like it. I, and if you don't like it either, you are well within your rights not to like it. Uh, you have you have every reason not to like it. And uh, there are alternatives out there. So, what kind of stuff are you doing at Fairhaven? Like, are there stuff that is there stuff that you like do more than other stuff? Uh, we're in the art room a lot more than we usually are, just doodling. Oh yeah, so so what kind of stuff? Just like doodling and kind of sharing like pictures and stuff. Uh, so we've drawn with our eyes closed. It's pretty funny. Oh, that's fun. We just decide what we're gonna draw. Like each of us comes up with an idea. We all have our idea, and we do rock paper scissors. And whoever is the last man alive, we do their idea, and we all draw it with our eyes closed, and then we draw it with our eyes open to show what we were trying to draw. That's super fun. So I want to know what's your favorite thing to do at Fairhaven? Be alive. Yeah. Probably. Help new people? I'm not sure, but like just favorite thing to do all the time. Favorite thing to do some of the time. Definitely help new people. So Allie, one of the things that I really want to ask you is that when your dad first contacted me, because he's like, my daughter hates doing homework. She just really doesn't like school. Like, what do I do? And I was talking to him about it. I want to know from you, what was regular school like? What was it that was really hard about it or really frustrating about it or that you just really didn't like? Because it seemed like you didn't like it. I really, really hated math. I just, I, I had went to a Spanish school before and they had focused on reading and language arts. And I really had to catch up and the teacher wasn't, well, she was new, and she'd put us with videos on the projector screen, and then the other people hadn't known how to do math. I mean, I, like, I was just, knew how to do addition and barely any subtraction. Right. And so, so you, you felt like it was just really hard, and you weren't able I to get I wasn't like the, the other kids. Like, yeah. I felt like I couldn't really do what yeah, they were doing. that's frustrating. I think your dad said you didn't really like to do homework at all. Like, you oh just, my God. it was homework, really hard, right? They just, they, they didn't really check over the answers. They just went around, put a check mark on them. Yeah. Did homework make you feel like kind of frustrated because you felt like you couldn't do some of that stuff? Or did it make you just feel like this is a waste of time? Or? This is a waste of time. I shouldn't be doing this. I don't even check it. Do you feel like it would have been better if you had a teacher who helped you with math a little bit more? Like you felt like you had more help? Or do you just feel like it was just math was, is not? I math was never really my thing the teacher didn't help me so since you've gone to Fairhaven do you feel like you've you've gotten better with any math like do you experience math at all in Fairhaven even if it's just like um he got a giant tub of cookie dough and like we had to figure out we had to do like kind of grid work on the baking sheet yeah and I've always been a big fan wow. of like doing grid works and arrays and yeah stuff like that so I, I like sketched it out for her on an on a grid sheet, and like we put dots as the cookies, and it really worked out well because the cookies they got bigger in the oven. Yeah. And yeah. we got in it, and it was like we sold cookies for like fifty cents, and it was fun. Yeah, Oops, that's. I, I feel like a lot of parents would be scared of a school like Fairhaven because, like, you're not working on math as like a school thing. But, I mean, you see math, right? I mean, you see, like like you said, like with the grids and stuff, there's math there. Yeah. Cool. Like, there's grid sheets and stuff. So, like, yeah. there's there's algebra club, there's math club, there's science club. I just don't really know where they meet, and most of the time I'm running around. Are there any times at Fairhaven where you come across something you want to do, but you don't know how to do, and you have to learn how to do it? Oh, my God. <laughs> yes. Yeah? Can you Can you tell me about a few of those? Uh, so, when I first got there, everyone was, like, doing this original game that was at Fairhaven. 
it was like I don't think it was original at Fairhaven, but it was like it was like kickball I think, and everyone's playing it like, and I didn't know how to play it, and no one had time to explain it to me because they were playing kickball, so I just had to learn for myself. So and how did you learn it then? Did you just like watch other people and like try stuff and? Basically, you kick a ball and you run. Right. Bases. And people would tell you if you're doing something that that is like wrong or against the rules or something. Yeah, and I'd just be out, right. even though I didn't really know. So I want to know all about government at school because I don't know anything about it. Oh, you mean JC? Yeah. Um. So first, we'll talk about the people who are actually on JC. Okay. Yeah. Um. It stands for judicial court. Okay, that's um, what I want to know. Yeah. So there's age groups of people who are actually at the table sitting there and who vote. So there's the oldest person, which is the staff. Then there's an older teenager who's like 16, 17, 15. There's a regular teenager who's 13, 14, 15, I think. I don't know. But um, And then there's like 11, 12, and then 5 through 7. Gotcha. So, and then there's the old Internet, which means like the clerks there's a person who types the report like types the report to go into the JC record and who just puts charges on the person and and then and then they put the sentences in their history too so you have like the representatives of the JC and then you have the typist and then, and then there's another person I forget the name but they like they say JC is called to order JC is adjourned and stay in order, which means shut up and don't talk. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens if someone, so if someone does something that is against the like, rules. The rules. All right, so I'll happens. explain how a write-up sheet works. Okay. There's a plaintiff, which is the person who's writing it up, a defendant, the person who's been written up, and then there's a date, time, location, and stuff like that. And then there's a space where you write what happened and then you can do a suggested charge, and you can ask not to be called on the sheet. So um, then once, like, the people explain what they did, then what happens? Then JC votes on the report. There's in favor, abstanding, and opposed. And then, like, is a uh, – so then majority rules, right? Majority rules are, like, majority rules are don't leave a mess, don't hit people, which is harassment and vulgarity, which means like vulgarity. So, mm -hmm. so do you feel like um, when JC is the one who punishes people if they like, do something against the rules or whatever, does that feel different to you than like when a school punishes you, like a regular school, the teacher, let's say, would punish you? Does it feel different? I mean, like in class, you just couldn't really talk to your friends. You couldn't pass notes. You couldn't do any of that. And they just say, don't pass notes. But um, Fair, Fairhaven is, like, all about responsibility and, like I said, learning to be your own person. The other day, we were in the circle room, which is, like, maybe I should give you a tour. When you first drive in through the gates, there's the parking lot to your right, and it has a four-square thing, a basketball court, picnic table, and then to your left is the climbing tree, and past that is the underbrush. The underbrush has a destroyed fort because some people destroyed the fort. There's another fort that's under a pine tree, and you could climb the pine tree too. And then in front of the pine tree, there's the climbing tree. I really love the climbing tree. It's super fun. I remember for like a week, all we would do, we would get to school, climb the tree, and just knock it down. <laughs> So that's wow. what you don't wow. get to do in traditional school, right? Like, you did you have a climbing tree in your other school? They were just, like, tall trees. You couldn't really climb them. And yeah. you certainly could, and you couldn't spend all day there. Mm -mm. Yeah. We had, like, 20 minutes at recess. Yeah, yeah. Um, so once you get past the climbing tree... Uh, field. Next? There's It's kind of in an L shape. So, like, there's the climbing tree, there's the pine tree, and then all through here is the underbrush. Past that's the field. So what kind of rooms are in the school itself? So down at the parking lot, there's a sidewalk and then a stone brick path to go up to the new building, 
which was built about two years ago. And when you walk in, there's the airlock where you, like, take off your shoes, and if they're wet, you can let them dry in there. And there's orange vests for hunting season. But there's another door in the airlock, and you can walk through there. And to your immediate right, there's the office. And you keep, if you keep on walking from there, at your front, there will be the quiet room where you just be quiet and chill out. So that would be for, like, if people want to read or do something that, like, they just want to concentrate on something probably? Yeah, it's most where most of the introverts hang out. Yeah. And if you turn right again, you can see the, the meeting room, which is where corporations meet. Like Fish Corp, they take care of the fish in there, and Attendance Corp. So when you walk down the hallway in the quiet room and you go left, you see the cubbies. There's just a bunch of cubbies right there. And there's a kid nook where, like, well, little kids hang out. If you get out of the kid nook, you walk into the cubby room, which is the Gary room at Fairhaven. <laughs> if you get out of there, you'll see the lounge where the kind of electronic zombies hang out because there's like seven outlets in there. I've and seen the lounge at a Sudbury school. I know what that looks like. That's if so you funny. walk, So you walk into the lounge, the actual room is like over here. But if you turn left, you can see that there's a music room. And the first part is where you can record yourself singing, you can listen to music in there, you can scream, but you have to be singing, you have to be using the room for musical purposes. I recently got restricted because I requested a song, and it was like, I hated the song, it was so annoying, so I turned it off. And I was trying to find a song, but right when she's finding a song, it comes in. And he's like, you guys have to be using this room for music. And so we say, okay. But then and his hands start roughhousing. And so it comes in again, and we all get written up. And I, my sentence just ended. I was restricted from the music room for a couple days. All right, so then uh, back, back to the tour, I guess. So music room, and then where, so where are we going next? And there's, there's another room in the music room. So there's, like, instruments in there. There's, like recording stuff there's microphones and guitars you have to be certified for all those what do you have to do for certification do you just have to show that you know how to use it uh there are certain people who are in certain corps and you they tell you the rules they tell you what to do and then they write your name on the certified list for whatever you're certified for and then you're certified it's actually a pretty nice room now there's like drums electric drums piano there's a little chair where you can sit on and... So do you play any of the instruments in there? Do you try to go in there and play any of it? Piano and electric drums are my yeah. favorite. How are you doing on them? Uh, I know a couple songs on the piano. Cool. So if you walk out from the outside lounge door, there's the under the porch area where there's like bikes, poles, jump ropes, hula hoops, stuff like that. And there's fairy lights under there. It's really cute. Oh, so if you fun. walk up the stairs, there's a giant porch, and um, if you walk directly to your right, you can go inside the Chesapeake room, which is like the gymnasium of Fairhaven. It's just a room with a couple tables and a stage, and, and if you walk to the door, make a left, and walk there, there's a couple couches, and then there's the airlock upstairs. There's vests in there, same drill, but then there's a temporary shine-out sheet. And the teenagers, they tend to go on food runs a lot because there's a Wawa right next to Fairhaven, and they can just go there and grab stuff. So what what rooms are you hanging out in most? It sounds like you're hanging out in the music room a fair amount. What else? Music room, airlock, and Chesapeake room, and yeah. art room. It sounds like you spend a lot of time outside, though, too. Yeah. I play yeah. Foursquare a lot. So is it the kind of thing where you'll do something really intently for like a week? And then do something else because you mentioned the climbing, the, the, the tree. You spent many days like just basically d going up there. And then you kind of do something else the next week mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Is that kind of what it's like? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whereas like, in regular school, it's like you do something for 40 minutes. And then you go to your next class and then you go to your next class. Yeah. I, like, I didn't really know what kind of person I was at my old school. Oh, wow. What, what do just, you mean? What kind of person are you? An introvert. Yeah person who likes to socialize, a person who likes to draw, a person who is sarcastic. And when you say you didn't know who you were at your other school, 
why is that because they wouldn't let you do what you wanted to do or yeah and when i got home i just do homework and eat yeah. dinner all right so let me ask you this question so there are people who are going to listen to this and be like how is she ever going to learn stuff how is she ever going to learn stuff she needs to learn well do you would you like what would you say to that person i'd say to that person i do respect your opinion and i hope you respect my opinion that you learn through doing a normal things like mm. baking and the drawing we found weird slimy stuff at the stream and we brought it back and we investigated it we like put it on the kitchen table just tossed it and we were like poking at it putting utensils in it and like stuff like that to see what it would do uh-huh yeah last year um, the little boys and little girls all teamed up, and we caught a bunch of frogs. This girl named Lisa, she hated the frogs, but we found this, like, giant frog this big. Yeah, so do you like it overall better than your old school? The fun part is, like, being yourself and learning how to take care of yourself, not having people there for you. That kind of sounds wrong when I say it out loud. No, no. that sounds exactly right. So what do you mean? Like, can you give me an example of like learning how to be, be able to take care of yourself and not have people who are always there for you? What does that mean? So like, like say your best friend isn't there on one day and then some kid is like really, really mean to you and his words hurt you or she, but um, you don't have your friend there and you, teach, you find things to do to make yourself feel better from then on. Wow. Like you just find things to do and you keep doing them and then you find new things to do and you just really expand your mind there wow that's pretty powerful because you're right in a regular school there would always be someone who would jump in yeah, so anything cool. else that you want to tell us ali about like the school or anything you think our viewers and listeners should know um uh, ups and downs what do you mean rights and lefts you know you never know where your day could go. You could think that you're going to you're going to play Foursquare and then you could end up just being on the couch all day, playing the computer all day. Yeah. You could think that you're going to win a game infection. You could be the first one tagged. You don't really know what's going to happen. Do you do you like that feeling or do you not like that feeling? Cuz it's different than regular school. Regular school is structured. You know regular how school, your day's you going to go. You just be like math, science, reading, lunch, recess. Right. So that sounds sort of like life to me, right? Like you can begin your day thinking that your day is going to go this way and instead it goes the other way. So I think that that's actually a perfect description about like what life is and about what learning through life is, right? Like you think you're going to play infection and maybe instead you're going to do art or maybe instead you're going to lie on the couch and read. I think that's so cool.